You're watching South Florida's news station, WSVN7. Pitts, Sanchez, Daniels, love it. This is Channel 7 News at 5. Los Angeles police trying to take back the streets, and tonight they're getting help. President Bush is sending in federal troops to try to save this city under siege. Good evening. Tonight, the federal troops are moving in. California officials made the request because the problem has become too hot, not to mention too huge to handle. And tonight, this announcement, Rodney King himself will address the nation, specifically the people of Los Angeles. That is expected to happen in about 15 minutes, and obviously, we are going to bring it to you live. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles right now, police are cracking down on looters and those who are starting fires. They are being assisted by a total of 6,000 National Guardsmen now and about another 1,000 federal lawmen, and there's more. 4,000 members of the U.S. Army are now on standby at Fort Ord. The fort is about 200 miles north of Los Angeles. Channel 7's Derek Hayward is the only South Florida television reporter in Los Angeles tonight. He is going to be joining us live in just a moment. But first, let's go to Channel 7's Mark Ludner. He begins our Team 7 coverage with the very latest from our satellite news center. Mark? Rick, like many other people, we are eagerly awaiting Rodney King's comments. That'll come, as you said, in about one quarter hour. We'll have it for you live, of course. Right now, what's going on in Los Angeles? A lot of cleaning up as people hope they have seen the worst. Let's show you some of the latest pictures before we go any further. Just take a look at some of this destruction. The destruction becoming more and more clear to cameras as the smoke clears in Los Angeles. It is now estimated some 3,600 fires have been set in the last couple of days. This video reaching us only about half an hour ago. It shows an area near the Forum Arena in the Inglewood section of Los Angeles. That's where the Los Angeles Lakers usually play basketball, but not tonight. Their game has been moved away. The big story from L.A. today, the relative calm in the streets as L.A. begins struggling to its feet and National Guard troops stand guard against new violence. Battle-ready troops went to the mall today. In scenes reminiscent of Desert Storm, the army is battling the firestorm of violence and anarchy that swept through Los Angeles for a second night. The flames of public lawlessness occasionally leaping out of South Central LA into portions of Hollywood and more affluent areas. In Koreatown, many merchants took weapons in hand to resist the tidal wave of looting. Many shopkeepers emptied their own shelves desperate to save their inventory from the looting frenzy. Daybreak brought relative calm as only about 15 fires burned on and as a city inspected its wounds and counted its costs. The death toll rising to about 30. The arrest toll headed for 1,000. The arson toll so far incalculable, as is the psychological toll. Jesse Jackson listened to some of the pain. This is not our, our fault. And it's not, this is not, this is just that black people. They keep saying it's black people. I've lived here my whole life. Why the hell are we going to burn down a, a hospital? What do we have to do by, by burning down a hospital? Ordinary people, meanwhile, struggled to resume normal life. Because mail service had been cut off in some neighborhoods, people by the thousands lined up at the post office to get their mail. Some areas were without electricity. Many schools, including the University of Southern California, were closed. In innumerable ways, life in parts of L.A. has become much more difficult to live. Yesterday when I left, I could not find a gas station open. There were no stores. I couldn't even stop to find a loaf of bread. The pharmacy is gone where I get my medication. I got to go somewhere to try and find a pharmacy. So it's terrible. I mean, everything that has happened, it has hurt us. And everywhere, fear seemed slowly to be yielding to grief and hope that the worst of L.A.'s civil war may be over. Okay, right now we're going to show you some live pictures from Los Angeles. Let's punch up satellite number five if we can do that. You're looking at aerial views of a peace demonstration in Los Angeles. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of people getting together, appealing for calm. We expect to hear another appeal from calm in about 10 minutes from Rodney King, the man, of course, who has been at the center of this storm, which now has engulfed cities across the nation. Live pictures of a peace demonstration in Los Angeles. We'll keep watching the satellites, of course. We have a continuous stream of live pictures coming in moment by moment from L.A.
Mark London reporting from the Satellite Center. We appreciate that, Mark. The total number of people dead has just risen. We're told to 37. We will continue to keep you updated. And tonight, as if that wasn't bad enough, there may be a more, uh, a bigger problem for the police department. It's going to be tough to keep the... Uh, be able to tell the difference between the police officers and the looters. About 200 police officers' uniforms were stolen from uh, dry cleaners in the L.A. community of Inglewood. Sally? Well, this L.A. riot is fast becoming one of the worst in U.S. history. The death toll has now surpassed the 1965 Watts riots. Only one South Florida television reporter was there from the beginning, and he remains there tonight, Channel 7's Derek Hayward. He joined us now from Los Angeles with, with the latest from that scene. Derek? Uh, Sally, the death toll that you're talking about, don't be surprised if that doesn't go up quite a bit more because what they've, what they've found today as the police have finally started to take control of some of the, the hard hit areas here is that when they're going into some of these burned out buildings now for the first time, they're finding bodies. They found the body of at least one 15 year old uh, girl today, uh, another 18 year old. By the way, five of those uh, killed so far uh, have been killed as a result of police fire. The main problem today, by the way, we're standing over Hollywood and last night we were showing you, it was mayhem here, fires everywhere. We've still got some burned out buildings down there on the street and fire engines just went by. We couldn't see where they were going to. But uh, the main problem today over in the really tough parts of town is that police are coming under sniper fire. Two police officers uh, this morning, first thing this morning, got hit. Fortunately, they were wearing uh, the bulletproof vests. Uh, the sniper using an AK-47 assault rifle. And as you mentioned, those stolen police uniforms are going to make it really tough for the cops tonight. Uh, this is only 2 o'clock right now in Los Angeles, and already Hollywood's starting to shut down. Everybody's going home early. Businesses are closing. The post offices, only 10 of them, open for about four hours today to let people come try to pick up mail, cash checks. There's very little mail delivery or anything else here. Bottom line right now is everybody here is very, very nervous. This was the scene at dusk in Hollywood. As far as you could see, there were fires. Firefighters at one point trying to contain 60 fires at once. Overhead, news and police spot a helicopters over Hollywood made the scene even more like the battle zone it had become. Fires raging less than half a mile from the famous Hollywood sign and the mansions of the stars. This morning at the Hilton near the airport, an area where most people thought they were safe last night. No mail here, no newspapers, food deliveries are delayed, but at least they thought they were safe. That's what they thought, but within a couple of hundred yards, we found scenes like this. Again, just a couple more blocks from the Hilton and all the tourists staying near the airport. Burger King still closed. You can see the sign on the front. This is for Rodney. Armed police over here now guarding this shopping center over here. Burned out building. And you can see there's a pit bull tied up to the front of the store over here. These people obviously very serious about keeping looters out today. This was all this morning. Yeah, all this morning. And this, what's going on over here is that the car that they take, yeah. we spotted a couple of guys taking stuff out of the, the uh, jewelry and loan. So we stopped them and turned them over to the police there. Lines at gas stations that have opened today for just a few hours before closing again. Other businesses boarding up for the whole weekend. The National Guard is protecting some grocery stores as they try to recover, restock, and open for a few hours. So compared to yesterday, it's relatively quiet right now, but the police say they think one reason might just be all the hoodlums who were out last night are hung over and tired, and they may well stir it up again as darkness begins to fall here. Reporting live from Los Angeles, Derek Haywood, Channel 7 News. All right, thank you, Derek, for that report. Also, just a reminder, Rodney King is scheduled to speak to the public and issue a statement in Los Angeles in less than 10 minutes. We will carry that live for you and have a full report in just about 15 minutes, so stay with us. Rodney King re reportedly is going to ask an appeal for calm to the public in Los Angeles. Stay with us, Rick. Mike Haggerty is standing by right now, reporter in Los Angeles. And uh, Derek Hayward mentioned just uh, moments ago about how things were going in the tough parts of Los Angeles. Last night, it wasn't the tough parts of Los Angeles that were coming under fire. Actually, it was the, uh, it was the Witsy Wilshire Boulevard area. Mike, uh, how bad has that area been hit? 
Well, uh, pretty badly, uh, certainly by Wilshire Boulevard standards. Make no mistake, we're not talking about burned out hulks like we are in South Central Los Angeles. However, people in neighborhoods where they thought they were safe, where they thought they had absolutely nothing to fear from the unrest that has rocked South Central Los Angeles, found out how wrong they were last night. Uh, this afternoon, I have seen a uh, bank reduced to a burned out hulk near MacArthur Park. As you get further and further down into uh, Wilshire Boulevard, however, it's um, it, it eases up. You're talking about looting and vandalism. The Bullock's Wilshire store, which has been there since the 1920s, was ransacked. People made off with all the goodies they can get their hands on. Tonight, the big worry here in Los Angeles are, is for the people who live in areas that haven't been touched. They are hoping that they will remain untouched by this and that they're not the new fuel for the fire. Mike Haggerty reporting to us live from Los Angeles, and uh, obviously they do have some reinforcements tonight. Originally they'd asked for 2,000 National Guardsmen tonight. That number has climbed to 6,000, and yes, they are already on the streets of Los Angeles. Sally? Well, tonight, Los Angeles isn't the only city trying to recover from civil unrest. That trouble spread. Violence related to those riots going on coast to coast. Disturbances have broken out in at least seven other cities around the country. We're going to begin in Las Vegas, where the National Guard has also been called in. Police have been the main target of disturbances there. Two people have been killed in the violence in Las Vegas. Two police stations were firebombed. One officer shot by a sniper. The violence started after police turned back 200 demonstrators who were trying to march into downtown. Let's go now to San Francisco in what started as a peaceful protest suddenly turned violent. Demonstrators set fires, looted and beat people walking by in the city by the bay. People shot one rioter and nearly a thousand people, a thousand people have now been arrested in San Francisco. The mayor has ordered his police officers to do whatever they have to to restore law law and order in the city. He slapped a curfew on the city to get people off the streets overnight. Moving on to Seattle, Washington, crowds of young people went on a four-hour rampage in the city's business district. Cars were torched, windows broken, stores looted. At least 50 people arrested there. Things are still tense in Atlanta tonight. A confrontation broke out between police and students who wanted to hold a rally for peace. Police tried to block the demonstrators from marching into downtown Atlanta. And as you can see, the protesters rushed at them trying to break through. Several people were arrested. Organizers did their best to keep things under control. When a couple hundred teenagers went on a wild rampage looting stores in a popular shopping district, dozens were hurt, hundreds injured. And in Florida, violence breaks out in the streets of Tampa. There were several disturbances there last night. Two reporters were hurt and gunshots were fired at police. Violence started after police started throwing rocks, after people started throwing rocks and bottles at a fire truck responding to a brush fire. All right, let's bring you a little closer to home now. At North Miami Senior High School today in Dade County, students vented their anger over the entire episode related to Rodney King. A couple hundred kids just got up and walked out of class today. The administration knew about it. The principals and teachers we refer to, of course. They did not try to stop the kids. Students chanted, we want justice, we want justice. They expressed severe anger over the racial problems in America, they say. Some of them even protested in front of the police department, which is several blocks away. But for the most part, it was a peaceful demonstration, and it did not last very long. Quick action by police in North Miami Beach, not far from there. May have stopped a tense situation from getting out of hand. A group of high school kids got loud and rowdy at 163rd Street Mall. So police and mall security moved in, and they were able to disperse the crowd. To be on the safe side, the mall was closed for the remainder of the day. We are told it will not reopen until tomorrow. As you know, rumors fly in tense times like these, and they have been flying in metro areas around the country from New York to right here in South Florida. Channel 7's Susan Kelleher is at our satellite news desk with more on the rumor situation. Susan? Well, Sally, the phones here in our newsroom have been ringing off the hook. People asking all kinds of questions about the stories they've heard. Rumors are flying, although there has been no trouble at all in Dade or Broward since the Rodney King verdict. Still, law officials have set up rumor 
control hotlines to help people get to the truth. I'll give you those numbers in just a minute, but first, a look at how rumors start. In New York City, a protest in City Hall Park grew bigger by the hour. It was peaceful but tense. Mayor David Dinkins appealed to the people for continued restraint. Police out in force just in case. But rumors of trouble flew after the protest. Many New Yorkers got out of the city long before any trouble could start. Many people in the city called it a day by 1 p.m. Many businesses shut down by 3 p.m., fueled by rumors there could be trouble. As I've mentioned, we've had rumors here, too. Anxious commuters are calling police departments, wondering if it's safe to leave downtown Miami. To put those rumors to rest, there are some hotlines. We have them for you, and here they are. In Broward County, you can call 765-4730. In Dade County, you can, or rather in Miami, excuse me, City of Miami, 579-6660. In Dade County, call 835-4012 or 835-4014. As I mentioned, there are no confirmed reports of any problems in Dade or Broward. But Barry University has canceled its nighttime classes just as a precaution. Reporting live from the Satellite Center, I'm Susan Kelleher. Back to you. And just as an adjunct to that, obviously, if there is any kind of uh, activity in South Florida tonight, we will bring it to you right now. To underscore what Susan said, there is no disturbance, no anything going on as far as we know in South Florida. The riots are having a major effect on people who are traveling to Los Angeles, though, causing one airline already to cancel most of its flights tonight. Thick smoke from burning buildings and the violence on the ground caused American Airlines to suspend the fourth of its flights in and out of Los Angeles International Airport. The airline usually has uh, 60 flights a day. Japan's largest travel agency also suspended tours to Los Angeles, obviously because of the rioting. Now violence and anger over the Rodney King verdict is spreading around the world. Thousands of protesters hit the streets of Berlin in what started out as a Labor Day protest. The protest turned into a riot with demonstrators burning cars and throwing Molotov cocktails, and many of them carried signs showing their solidarity with those who are supporting Rodney King in Los Angeles. Well, stay with us for the very latest on the situation in Los Angeles. Rodney King, as we told you earlier, is expected to address the public any minute now in Los Angeles in an attempt to appeal for calm in L.A. after the four officers... But a naked pharmacist does. All right, how many this time? Eight cavities. 14 cavities? I didn't think I had that many teeth. You're going to have to drill? My parents will be very upset. Parents today hope their kids won't have to go through what they went through. Luckily, today's kids use the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Crest. Crest fluoride formula strengthens tooth enamel, helping to protect against cavities. Another great checkup. Yes! Woo, woo, woo. Later, dude. <laughs> Crest, the dentist's choice, is the easy choice. It's been fun. You know, for calm in Los Angeles, he's not going to take any questions, we understand, but he's just supposed to appeal for calm in the streets of Los Angeles and make this appeal from his lawyer's office there. But apparently it has been delayed and we're staying on top of it. We'll find out when it's going to be rescheduled, hopefully within the next half hour, and we will bring it to you live. On, in other areas, obviously the president considers the L.A. riots a very serious matter. He's not only sending in federal troops, he's deciding to go on TV tonight to talk to the nation about what's happening. He made both decisions after meeting with civil rights leaders at the White House this morning. Channel 7's Tom Cole continues our Team 7 coverage from Washington. It's a stark contrast to the violence in the streets of Los Angeles and other cities. Here in Washington, peaceful demonstrators marched to the Justice Department, protesting the verdict in the Rodney King beating trial. At the White House, leaders from the minority community were the first to hear that President Bush had called out the military. The U.S. Army will move approximately 4,000 troops from Fort Ord, California, to a staging area in Los Angeles where they can be utilized quickly and effectively if necessary. The White House limited the media's access to his meeting with civil rights leaders. Many of them have been critical of the president's civil rights record and still are. The nation is in an outrage and it calls for a kind of leadership that hasn't occurred, I would think, uh, since the Johnson, the president, late President Johnson, went into the uh, well of the, uh, the House of Representatives and made his, his powerful We Shall Overcome speech. When your leaders have nothing to offer, nothing to say, 
when, when the rug is pulled, when the justice rug is pulled from under our feet, then people who would normally listen to us won't listen to us. While the civil rights leaders say they'll support whatever measures may be needed to restore order in Los Angeles, they say the military is not the only answer, that it's time for the president to deal with the larger issues facing urban America. I, I think he is beginning to recognize the fact that unless we deal with this issue, America's in for a long, hot, not summer, but a long, hot number of years ahead. And the president may have gotten that message loud and clear. He will address the nation live from the Oval Office tonight at 9 o'clock. In those remarks, he's expected to outline the role of the federal troops. What's not clear is whether he will address any of the larger issues raised in today's meetings. At the White House, Tom Cole, Channel 7 News. Once again, the president is speaking to the nation tonight at 9 o'clock from the Oval Office, and you can see it here live on Channel 7. We'll bring it right to you, Rick. Well, as they grapple with the uh, aftermath of this uh, Rodney King decision, South Florida prosecutors, those people who will have to prosecute Miami police officer William Lozano, are becoming somewhat concerned themselves tonight. Channel 7's Michael Williams has long been following this story, and he joins us now with some of their reaction. Michael? Well, Rick, their concern precluded what happened in L.A. Nonetheless, what has happened was expected. Late this afternoon, the state is asking a judge to move the William Lozano manslaughter retrial out of Orlando. Dade prosecutors point out that the prospect of getting an all-white jury in Orlando is far higher than it is in Dade County, which has many more African-American citizens. Furthermore, there were concerns that old case law in Orlando would make it impossible to build a manslaughter case there and then make it stick in that jurisdiction. No word from Judge Thomas Spencer on how he'll treat this request. Lozano earned a retrial, you'll recall, after his original manslaughter conviction because an appeals court said worries about civil unrest kept him from getting a fair trial the first time around in Miami. We'll have more on this as it develops. Back to you. All right, Michael Williams on, on top of that, and we certainly appreciate it, Shelley. Well, let's go back to Los Angeles and see what's happening there. We have CNN's Charles Zewi standing by live for an update. Charles? Sally, right now, things are rather calm here. There's a lot of traffic out on the streets in L.A., and people have been coming back to their burned-out businesses. A lot of stores back here, piano store, dentist's office. A local health clinic has been burned out here. People are coming back to survey the damage and try to clean up and salvage what they can. Overall, however, in Los Angeles at this hour, things appear to be getting much better. A thick pall of smoke hung over L.A. through most of the day as fires continued to burn. But as police and National Guardsmen retook neighborhoods plundered by looters and arsonists, rioting that has gripped wide areas of the city for two days appeared to be ending. We are gaining control of the situation. There certainly was a great deal of improvement last night over the night before. A dusk to dawn curfew partially succeeded in curtailing violence that has left more than three dozen people dead and 1,300 injured. More than 3,000 people have been arrested so far, most for curfew violations. But some were caught inside pillage stores. All right, we're uh, cutting out of that um, report because we understand that we have a very important feed coming in right now. It may have something to do with the Rodney King statement. Uh, Mark Ludner standing by. Mark, you got it? Rick, we're waiting any moment now for Rodney King himself, the man at the center of this storm, to come to the microphones in Los Angeles, and we expect appeal for calm. We're told in advance he will take no questions from the press. He will make a statement. This is his first meeting with the press in Los Angeles since shortly after his arrest by Los Angeles PD and police in March of last year. Of course, it was the not guilty verdict in Los Angeles a couple of days ago that sparked the violence in that city and in other cities around the country. You're looking at live pictures from Los Angeles as uh, people await, mostly press people, await Rodney King's appearance. This uh, was announced earlier today. Of course, it's, it's commanding attention in L.A. and around the country. This is the man we have not heard from. We didn't hear from him at the trial, and we've been eagerly awaiting to hear from him today. Rodney King, again, about to step up to the microphones to uh, make a statement that I'm sure will be uh, the subject of attention all over L.A. We expect him to appeal for calm. We're told he will not take any questions. Mark, uh, I'm wondering, uh, have we had a chance to find out yet why the delay? Uh, from what we understand, they were uh, busy drafting his statement up until the last moment. And um, as these things often happen, it, it, it took uh, a bit longer than expected. Right now, by the way, it's about 2.25 in the afternoon in Los Angeles on a day mostly spent cleaning up and uh, counting the damage from uh, the last two days of rioting. 
All right, okay. we're here. Wait a second. Yeah, I see. Here he comes. We're some activity now. Here comes Rodney King. Uh, we're going to join the audio as well as the video from this feed from Los Angeles. Uh, down. Walking uh, somewhat hey, hesitatingly. Rodney King and Steve Lerman. Hey, down, please. Down. Down. Now this is Steve Lerman, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, attorney. I want to thank you all for coming. On behalf of Rodney King, and all of us that have uh, worked and continue to work with Rodney King to ensure justice being done in his case, we thank you. Until today, Mr. King's personal safety and security could not be guaranteed. And although he wanted to come forward much sooner to call for peace, he was also fearful that his very presence, his very appearance, might incite more violence when his own anger after the verdicts were read might not have had a calming effect. We are all still shocked by the verdict in the Simi Valley trial of the four officers charged in the beating of Rodney Glenn King. The aftermath of urban violence inflicted upon the city of Los Angeles and other areas, however, calls for a putting aside of shock and anger and demands that civil order return. And while there's no doubt that the verdicts in the King case precipitated the violence, it is clearly apparent that a senseless and criminal mentality has taken over the streets of our city. Rodney King has this to say to all the people of Los Angeles and all the people of the cities of the United States so caught up in this horror and hate. The killing, the burning, the looting, the chaos must stop now. As an African American and a black man, the victim of the most notorious incident of police excessive force, Rodney King is well aware, well aware of the pain and sense of loss which is a product of violence, however manifested. Rodney King will have justice, but in a court of law. Please do not forget that Mr. King does have a civil rights action pending in Los Angeles, not Simi Valley. And justice will be his. All of us working on behalf of Mr. King to bring the four officers to justice, as well as the city of Los Angeles to account for the unconstitutional policy and practice in existence on March 3rd of 1991, which was the cause of the Foothill incident, are desirous of change, but not destruction. <clears throat> change in the fundamental way that cops treat citizens of all colors. Although Mr. King is still frightened and anguished by the verdicts in Timmy Valley, he is mindful of the pain of others, pain sometimes inflicted by the police and sometimes sadly by violence of citizens against citizens. This must stop. He wants this to stop. Don't kill yourselves in his name, but pick up the pieces, rebuild your neighborhoods, and plan on getting along with the police. They are necessary to ensure the safety of this city. Although Rodney King had the misfortune of meeting up with some very angry, out of control cops on March 3rd of 91, he knows that not all police are like Powell, Wynn, Kuhn and Brasino, police officers that serve their community are supposed to be sensitive to the constitutional and human rights of their citizens. What happened to Rodney King on March 3rd of 91 must serve as an example of cops out of control. This city can't be an example of a society out of control. The time for healing is upon us. Rodney King has prepared a very brief statement. I want to again emphasize to all of you, this is his very, very first public appearance. So much has happened to all of us that live in the city, that live in the country, the world, that the shock, 
The March 3rd, 91 beating of Rodney King is now revisited upon us a hundredfold. And because of that verdict in Simi Valley, our city has been torn apart. Mr. King has anger over that and concern over that, but he wants the citizens, Los Angeles and the world, to know that he will have justice again in a court of law. I've instructed Mr. King that he is response to certain questions which are still the subject of ongoing litigation might interfere with that litigation. And I have requested from all of you that questions not be put to him. I greatly appreciate your respecting our request and I know that you empathize with our uh, dilemma. Mr. King suffered a great deal on March 3rd and continues to suffer by virtue of that incident. Please, if you can, to cooperate and ensure that the strain and stress of an event like this not be more burdensome than it has to be. <coughs> Mr. Rodney. Um, people, I, um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Um, can we stop making it, making it horrible for? For the, for the older people and the, and, the, and, the, and the kids. And I mean, we've got enough smog here in Los Angeles, um, let alone to uh, d deal with the uh, setting these fires and, and things. It's, it's, it's just not right. It's not right. And um, it's, not, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna change anything. Um, We'll, we'll get our justice. Um, they've won the battle, but they haven't won the war. We, we'll have our day in court, and that's all we want. And just, uh, I, I love, I, you know, I'm, I'm neutral. I love every, I love people of color. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not like they picking me out, picking me out to be. Um, We've got to, we've got to quit. We've got to quit. You know, after all, I mean, I can understand the, the, the first upset for the first two hours after the verdict, but uh, to go on, to keep going on like, like this, and to see the security guard shot on the, on the ground, it, um, it's, it's, uh, it's just not right. It's just not right because those people are, are, will never go home. To, to their families again, and uh, I mean, please, we can we can get along here. We we all can get along. We just gotta just gotta, you know. I mean, we're all stuck here for a while. Let's you know, let's 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 try to work it out. Let's try to beat it. You know, let's try and work it out. Thank you, Steve. Can you ask Thank Rodney? You. Can you ask Rodney? No, no, no question. question. No okay. question. Thank you very much. So Steve, Steve and I will be available if you have any questions. Okay, that was Rodney Go King. Uh, now Steve Lerman is uh, moving again toward the A very eloquent appeal by Rodney King. Mr. Emotional. Lerman. He was looked like he was on the verge of tears, wanting it to stop and saying, can we all get along? Can we please all get along? This has to stop. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what impact that appeal is going to have. It's obvious he felt it from the very depths of his heart. He has apparently been watching the television and saw people shot and killed and is very upset about that and the burnings and wants it very much to stop. Powerful words. People, can we get along? Can we please get along? Those are the words that end the uh, Rodney King statement and it also ends this part of our newscast. But. Uh, Joan Lovett and Penny Daniels are going to be along, and they're going to continue to cover the situation that's taking place right now in Los Angeles for the next several hours. We at Channel 7 will be on top of it. We'll see you at 6.